We're sitting here in the Cascade Volcanic Observatory, which I think is one of the coolest federal offices in the portfolio. So what is our you know, premier debris flow facility and team doing in a volcano lab? So the reason um, debris flows became such a focal point of investigations here at CVO, because CVO was established really in response to the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, is that um, it had been appreciated really since since the late 1960s, but even more so after the Mount St. Helens eruption, that in many ways the single greatest hazard associated with uh, Cascade volcanoes are the lahars that, that run down the valleys um, that drain the slopes of the volcanoes. It's an Indonesian term for a debris flow or potentially a, a hyper-concentrated stream flow that originates on a volcano. Okay. But I think the other thing um, that's distinct about them is just that they can be so immense okay. co compared to any um, debris flow that would occur in a non-volcanic setting. And so the world's largest lahars, the ones that we know about, um, not so much from historical times, but from the geologic record, mm -hmm. you know, were, were um, several cubic kilometers in volume, wow. you know, so several billion cubic meters. And um, to put that in context, the largest debris flows I'm aware of, um, at least in historic times, of non-volcanic origins are are more on the order of, of perhaps one or 200 million cubic meters. Yeah. And so we're talking about orders of magnitude difference right. in maximum size. The electron debris flow, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, the, the electron mud flow occurred roughly 500 years ago. Um, it originated high on the, the um, western side of Mount Rainier. And as far as we know, based on the geologic evidence, it was not the result of a volcanic eruption. Um, there was simply no eruptive materials that have been found in association with that deposit. And so we believe that what happened is that it was just a big landslide, yeah. sim similar to what happened at Mount Meager in 2010, but, but much larger. And, um, and it traveled you know, down some very steep slopes and canyons as it left um, the immediate vicinity of Mount Rainier. Um, reach the lowland area where there are now um, several tens of thousands of people living, particularly right. the, the, the closest large town is a town called Ording, um, but inundated a broad swath of lowland area that's, that's now um, heavily, uh, heavily populated. And so if something similar to that were to happen today, you know, it, it really could be a potentially quite a devastating event. And that's one of the reasons the USGS has put a lot of effort into um, installing monitoring equipment to try to detect an event like that. We've also put in a lot of effort recently in modeling That's similar right. kinds of events to try to understand their dynamics better and and uh, refine hazard forecasts. And so you have a kind mm -hmm. of a geophysical flow model that, that spans all of the entire continuum that we've talked about from hyperconcentrated flows to you know debris flows to landslides. Um, and you've done some modeling on this. How fast is one of these lahars? So the speeds that lahars can reach in the steep upper canyons where they're leaving um, the immediate, uh, you know, faces of the volcano at high elevations, the, the speeds can be astounding in those kinds of localities. Um, for example, with this event that occurred um, at Mount Meager in 2010, what the seismic data interpretations indicate is speeds up to about 200 miles an hour. So that's you know, pretty darn fast. 200 miles, 200 miles an, an hour. hour. I, don't, I, think, and, I don't know any and, other and, geophysical hazard that 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 wins that wins the Olympics of the geophysical hazards. That 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 may well be true. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the reason for those high speeds is the combination of very steep slopes and very large volumes of material. So there's just a whole lot of momentum involved. Um, you know, pyroclastic flows can move very fast, but but um, they seldom have the great volumes that mm -hmm. some of these larger mm -hmm. lahars have. Um, also, our model results, our, our simulations for the west side of Mount Rainier indicate similar kinds of peak speeds. Yeah. So um, that seismological inference for Mount Meager is not at all out of line with what we infer um, from the, set, from the uh, modeling. And other kinds of evidence are the fact, for example, that that Mount Meager event um, 
at one point reached a T intersection, a confluence of two streams that basically formed a T intersection. And there was a mountainside on the downstream side of that T. And that flow, when it hit the mountainside, ran up um, more than 800 feet oh my vertically goodness. up the side of that mountain. How many feet? 800. Oh, my goodness. 800 vertical feet. Yeah. I've never heard of anything <laughs> like that. So, so yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's somewhat staggering.